The United States State Department has urged Americans to exercise increased caution when traveling to China after a spate of high-profile detentions. Its updated advice warns that United States citizens have been arbitrarily prevented from leaving the country. The warning comes as two Canadian citizens remain in detention in China. Former diplomat Michael Conrick and businessman Michael Spiller were arrested last month as relations between the two countries worsened. The pair face accusations of harming national security and, on Thursday, China's top prosecutor said they had, without a doubt, violated the law. Separately, three United States citizens were accused of committing economic crimes and barred from leaving China in November. Victor and Cynthia Liu, who are the children of a fugitive businessman, and their mother, Sandra Hong, have reportedly been detained since June. The new advisory warns of so-called exit bans, which prohibit foreign citizens from leaving China. It says the bans have been used coercively to lure individuals back to the country. It also adds that United States citizens have been detained for years and subjected to harassment while on the run exit ban. United States citizens may be detained without access to consular services or information about their alleged crime. The advisory reads, individuals not involved in legal proceedings are suspected of wrongdoing have also been subjected to lengthy exit bans in order to compare their family members or colleagues to cooperate with Chinese courts. The State Department said in a separate warning issued last January, the latest advice also warns of special restrictions on those who hold dual United States Chinese citizenship. Dual citizenship is not allowed under Chinese law, and the State Department has warned that United States Chinese nationals can be detained and denied United States assistance in China. It advises traveling on a United States passport with a valid Chinese visit and asking officials to notify the United States Embassy immediately if you are detained or arrested. Canadian teacher Sarah McKeever was reportedly released last week after she was held far unlawfully working in China. China and Canada both said the case was different to that of Mr. Kovrig and Mr. Spiller who stand accused of harming national security. Their detentions followed the arrest of Huawei chief financial officer Man Wanzhou, who was held in Vancouver at the request of United States prosecutors on 1 December. She faces extradition to the United States to face fraud charges, which she denies, that are linked to allegations of avoiding United States sanctions on Iran. China insists the detention of both men is not linked to Ms. Man's arrest, but many analysts believe it was a tate for tate action. On Thursday, China's Prosecutor General said the pair had violated our country's laws and regulations and were being investigated. Beijing has also defended its decision to bar the three United States citizens from leaving the country in November. A foreign ministry spokesman told reporters that they all have valid identity documents as Chinese citizens and are suspected of having committed economic crimes. Their father, Liu Chaming, is wanted in a $1, 4 BN, 1 BN fraud case in China, and the family has said their detention is an attempt to lure him back to face charges. A poacher has been ordered to watch the Disney film Bambi repeatedly.
after he was convicted of illegally killing hundreds of deer. Missouri hunter David Barry Jr. must view the film at least once a month during his year-long sentence. He was arrested in August along with two family members for killing the deer, taking their heads and leaving their bodies to rot. Prosecutors said it is reportedly one of the biggest poaching cases in Missouri history. On top of the jail sentence for the illegal deer hunting, Judge Robert George ordered Barry J. R. to view the Walt Disney movie Bambi with the first viewing being on a uh, before December 24, 2018, and at least one such viewing each month thereafter. During his spell in prison, the 1940 true cartoon about woodland creatures shows a hunter kill the mother of eponymous deer character Bambi, a months-long investigation spanning several states led to the arrest of Barry J.R., his father David Barry, Sr., and his brother Kyle Barry, according to local newspaper, the Springfield News Leader. While the total number of deer taken illegally is unknown, Lawrence County's conservation agent Andy Barnes said it could be several hundred. Barry J.R. received a year-long sentence in Lawrence County Prison after pleading guilt to illegally taking wildlife. He has also been sentenced to a 1-0 day term in Barton County Prison for a firearms probation violation, and both he and his father had their hunting privileges revoked for life by the Missouri Conservation Commission. Two Scandinavian women tourists have been found dead in Morocco with kids to their necks. The country's interior ministry said both bodies were found near the town of Emilia in the High Atlas mountain range, near the foot of North Africa's highest peak, Mount Dabko. The women, from Denmark and Norway respectively, have not yet been named. A police investigation has been launched into their deaths. The interior ministry statement said. The United States military says it has killed 62 fighters from the Islamist group Al-Shabaab in six air strikes in Somalia. Four air strikes on Saturday killed 32 militants, and a further two on Sunday killed 28, it said in a statement. This was the deadliest air attacks in Somalia since November 2017, when the United States said it had killed 100 militants. Somalia has seen a sharp increase in the number of airstrikes and casualties since President Donald Trump took office in the United States in January 2017. A tally by the Bureau of Investigative Journalism reveals that at at least 500 people have been killed in airstrikes since the beginning of 2017, far more than the previous 10 years combined. The latest strikes bring to at least 30 the number carried out in Somalia so far this year, compared with 35 recorded in 2017. The United States has a huge military base in neighboring Djibouti, from where it launches attacks on the militants. Mr. Trump gave the United States military greater authority in March 2017 to attack militants in Somalia. Traditionally, United States presidents have been wary of intervening in Somalia since it is special. Forces soldiers died fighting militias in the capital Mogadishu in 1993, a battle dramatized in the film Black Hawk Down. No civilians were killed in the latest air strikes, which were carried out in coordination with the Somali government, the United States military said, alongside our Somali and international partners. We are committed 
to prevent an Alshabet from taking advantage of safe havens from which they can build capacity and attack the people of Somalia, the United States Africa Command said. Al-Shabaab, which is linked to Al-Qaeda, has not yet commented on the latest strikes. Somalia-based security think tank the High Royal Institute said in a report published in November that Al-Shabaab had been forced to change tactics following the upsurge in airstrikes. The institute said the group was now conducting fewer mass attacks on military bases. But attacks on government offices and businesses which refused to pay it taxes had increased markedly. The United States State Department, in its most recent report on terrorism, described Somalia as a terrorist safe haven and said that Shabab remained a threat despite suffering setbacks. The group retained the control over large parts of the country and the ability to carry out high-profile attacks using full-side bombers, explosive devices, mortars, and small arms. The report added, the United States military says it has killed 62 fighters from the Islamist group Al-Shabaab in six airstrikes in Somalia.